Hi, it's James from Responsive Developer here. So, a little funny thing happened today. I was trolling around the internet and I saw something about Windows 8.1 developer training. Not something I normally look at because I'm a bit of an Ubuntu Linux guy. That's that's my nice area and I do everything else in Windows um, regarding media and games and things like that. Anyway, part way through uh, the Windows training, um, they mentioned that the OpenGL or WebGL uh, supports Blender, uh, Blender 3D. That's one of my most favorite things um, to use in my hobby time. Um, the rest of the time I'm just coding. Um, anyway, so I did a bit of an internet search, I found a random thread in a thought uh, forum, and basically I found Blend for Web. Um, yeah, really surprised, but um somebody's come up with uh, a plugin for blender and you can just export straight to html i mean how amazing is that uh, it's that's just pretty awesome um so basically i went to the site and i thought right there's going to be some sort of convoluted way of installing it as usual um but no um you just go to the site you go to the downloads part um there we go we download it, uh, version 1501 at the time of this um, blog video thing. Um, so I downloaded it and basically then went, as suggested in the very clear documentation on Blender for Web, um, we go to, if I just make that full screen. So I, I've just got a scene I was messing about with um, just to test it and see if it works straight out of the box. Um, so go to user preferences and then basically go to the, um, user preferences, then add ons and somewhere in here, that should be, there's an install from file somewhere and I can't quite remember where it is cause I've just installed it. How embarrassing. So add-ons oh there we go it's down at the bottom I, I always forget where that is i think it should be in this gray area for some reason anyway uh click on install um yeah click on the zip file and then click in install from file and then if we go back to the blender view and we're just starting 3d view and just save it there so basically um you should now in the the file menu have export and there's to json and to html it is that simple um one thing i would mention though um doesn't work with cycles um that i know of just yet but i've only been testing it for about 20 minutes so i've not really looked into much of it yet but um probably do another video in the, in the future about it but make sure you've got it set to blender render um I've basically just added a world. Um, yep, you know, horizon, zenith colors, ambient color, blah. So you get your default cube, and from the documentation on Blend for Blender for Web, um, basically it, it says unwrap the project as a v UV. So um, stick a cube in the middle if it's not already there. Um, go into edit mode, press A to select all of it and then go to unwrap um, you click on that it unwraps it go into the UV editor image editor and basically once you're um, you press tab and you go into edit mode the uh, UV um, mapping will show up basically it's put all all six sides of the cube on top of each other and I've basically got a logo from my website because um, I know it's copyright free and yeah, what the hell, it'll do. It's a nice size. Uh, you just click on it, and as you can see, it turns up in there quite nicely. And just for effect, because I want, I, I wanted to see what the shadows were doing on the um, on the floor, whether it exported the lamps and uh, textures, and whether it would do certain things. I'm going to have a mess around with animation and see how it copes with that, what load it's going to put on the browser, etc. Because I'm still unsure of that at the moment. Is a very simple scene two objects um what's that eight sides and one lamp so basically uh for this simple demo scene 
I've stuck a lamp in there and it's just a spot lamp and it's got the preview there, I've got the energy and the colour, it's all all default lamp. Camera, again, default, just stuck it in there, facing the cube, honky dory. If you're wondering now, I've got the um, textures to show in the 3D view. Uh, just click on the viewport shading and click on textures. Right, the big question you might want to know is, well, how easy is it to export? Well, very simple. You click, well, let's just save that first. You click on file, then go to export, then go to blender for web. Um, one thing I've found is you can't write this file to a separate disk. So the location of your blender file has to be on the same hard drive as the export um, for the file. It's no biggie. Um, it's just that I usually have my operating system on one drive and my files in another, um, but it won't currently let you do that. Um, and then you just click the uh, B4 WHTML export button. It does it properly quick, and you should then find uh, a HTML file uh, in the same directory as the Blender file. Just double click it, you get a nice little spinning wheel, and there you go. There's a cube in the scene. It's not brought through the textures though. I've, I have just noticed that. Why is it not doing that? I do not know currently. Probably because I've not done in something in the settings um, to, to actually show uh, the textures. But in essence, that is a really great tool. Um, the 3D view is pretty simple to use once it's in the web browser. Um, we've got zoom in and out, which is on the mouse key. We've got left button click and rotate the mouse for moving the object around. It's lovely and fast. I've not got the best graphics card in the world, um, but it's fairly decent. Medium, medium processing quality. GTX 460, I think it is, uh, NVIDIA. So it, it's handling quite well. Um, I'm, I'm going to have to see how this works with uh, larger models and... Um, with textures, like I say, once I've figured that out, um, I'm, I'm sure that I'm going to be very happy using this. Um, yeah, so there you go. Blender for web. How very awesome. So after a bit of tinkering around, I've found the solution. Um, what I'd actually not done is um, set the material uh, in the image um, for that material. Um, so we we have our default uh, diffuse, and then you add uh, a material, uh, an image material. Um, where's the drop down now? There we go. Uh, so it might just put uh, a default texture uh, node in there. Um, but basically, select image or movie, then load um, the image from your drive. Now the interesting thing is that you can't load resources as well as um, you cannot save to uh, a different hard drive. So yeah, remember to have everything on the same drive and uh, everything exports just fine. Um, and there you go, as you can see, the logo sits on the top. I've probably got some other settings um, to sort out, uh, uh, like the shading being uh, a cube and not a flat. Um, let's just see if I can have a quick look, see if it's a simple fix. Uh, it's, oh, it's got parallax as well. Great. Wow. Um, so I've just found another setting I really like. Um, the trendy par parallax. Well, that's really cool. Um, so in, in the, in the uh, properties window, I think it's called, um, basically, you've got a Blender for Web uh, drop-down stroke menu item, and let's have a look. Let's cube and save that. Um, so you can just select uh, different options. Um, not read the manual at this point. Um, I'm just seeing what works and what doesn't. So I'm just select a cube. So I might as well just do that now. Oh, as you can tell, I'm a little excited about the, the possibilities of this. And spin wheels. Yeah, the cube. I should get rid of that. No. So there's another setting somewhere. But the important thing is, um, 
within half hour I've got a scene on my screen it's rotating it's fine I've got textures on it I've got a lamp in there and there's all these wonderful little options down at the bottom um, so if I just bring that up oh the other really cool thing is that it's all responsive so I guess from my perspective um, I could build a web page in this and that would be really freaking cool. So I might just try that as a little side project. That would be awesome. Um, anyway, I got distracted. So the little settings cog. Um, uh, question mark, pause, and rotate. So you can just have your scene automatically rotate. And you can pause it. And you've got the resolution. You can have high or low quality. It does reload it. Um, yeah, it does get a little grainy. The anti in on the side. But meh. Um, at this point, I'm uh, I'm not worried about that. So there we go, and then we've got the I presume to be full screen button. Wow, that works. That's rather cool. Yeah, it does bog down a little. You can see it just struggling a little with that, but I have gone to a crazy resolution as this monitor's uh, 2054 wide it's, it's uh, humongous um, and it's a, I use it for developing and um, blend a CG film sort of uh, things but it is a humongously wide monitor so it's not doing too bad I guess and I'm I'm super stoked I'm super happy about this I'm I'm gonna be a very busy chap tonight coffee me up Thanks once again, rate and subscribe, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed this insight into something new.